Hello, my name is Jared Tanner. I'm a doctoral candidate at the University of Florida, I'm working on my dissertation looking at the cingulum as it relates to verbal memory in Parkinson's disease. Today I'm going to talk about the cingulum, uh, what it is, where it is, and some of the cognitive functions that it is involved in. Before I talk about the cingulum, I'm going to first talk about the cingulate gyrus. The cingulate gyrus is located on the medial surface of the brain, as you can see here in the picture, uh, highlighted in red. The cingulate gyrus has two major components, the anterior portion that you see there highlighted in blue, and the posterior cingulate that is highlighted in orange. The anterior cingulate is involved in emotion. Changes there, uh, both structural and functional, have been related to depression, apathy, and other affective changes. The posterior cingulate is thought to be involved in more cognitive functions than the anterior cingulate is. Um, it's involved in attention, visual spatial skills, working memory, as well as memory. Now if we take off the cortex there, the cingulate, and uncover the white matter underneath, um, we will see the cingulum. The cingulum, you can see it there in red here in this picture, is one of the most prominent white matter tracts in the brain, the big collection of axons coming off of the neuron cell body. And the cingulum was one of the earliest white matter bundles that was identified as researchers were doing brain dissections. The cingulum, you can see, is roughly C-shaped. Um, it wraps around the brain, frontal lobes, all the way down into the temporal lobes, and it travels above the corpus callosum, the big interconnection between the hemispheres of white matter fibers. This artist rendering of the cingulum is based off of human anatomy and dissections. Um, using MRI machines, we can take pictures of the brain. Specifically, if we use a diffusion-weighted sequence, we can be able to track the white matter and look at these bundles in live humans. So using this fiber tracking method, you can see here the same C-shaped structure, the bundle, traveling from the frontal lobe down into the temporal lobe. So this image matches the, the artist rendering that we saw earlier. But the cingulum is considerably more complex than that. So you can see here in this picture, all the fibers that are entering and exiting the cingulum. There are fibers going up and forward and backwards, a bunch of fibers connecting to the frontal lobes, the parietal lobes, and down into the temporal lobes. So the cingulum is an important white matter bundle that is connecting a lot of areas of the brain to a lot of other areas of the brain. One important part of the brain that the cingulum connects to is the hippocampus, shown here in orange. The hippocampus and surrounding cortex, the enterotic cortex and parotic cor cortex are important for memory functioning. Damage to the hippocampus or the surrounding area can result in amnesia, the inability to create new memories. So connecting various parts of the brain with the medial temporal lobe, with the hippocampus, the enterotic cortex, and the parotic cortex is just one function of the cingulum. So here with the cingulum, you can see, as, as it turns, you can see the parietal connections there at the back of the brain. And these are all just fibers that are entering and exiting the cingulum and connecting the parietal lobe with the frontal lobe and down with the temporal lobe. And as this image turns more, you can see that I'm just showing the left cingulum. Like most structures in the brain, there are two of everything, one in each hemisphere. Uh, so we're just showing the left cingulum and uh, we can start to see some of the connections with the up in the frontal lobe. The cingulum is a big structure and so damage to any part of it can affect a lot of different areas of the brain and a lot of different cognitive functions. You can damage either the gray matter, the bodies of the neurons, or the white matter, these axons. So for example with a traumatic brain injury, let's say someone's climbing a ladder and they fall off and they hit their head, the sudden 
change in momentum, the stopping of the, the body caused the brain to move around inside the head and stretch and twist. And that stretching and twisting can stretch and twist the white matter, the axons, and it can shear them, even break them. And so damage like that would be diffused throughout the brain and will affect the cingulum, affect other parts of the white matter, and that can have far-reaching effects and detriments on a lot of different cognitive functions. So the front part of the cingulum and cingula are involved in emotion, in emotion processing, and the posterior portion are more involved in the cognitive functions. So you can see the cingulum here is a C-shaped structure that travels the entire length of the brain from the base of the frontal lobe curving up and back over the corpus callosum, back to the parietal occipital area, and then curving forward up to terminate in the temporal poles, the front part of the temporal lobe. The cingulum is part of the Pape circuit, which was proposed by James Papes as a circuit of emotion and memory. And the cingulum takes information, it integrates, and allows for the integration of information it's salient for memory from all over the brain. The cingulum is a prominent and important bundle of white matter fibers that travels just beneath the surface of the cingulate cortex in the medial portion of the brain. It's involved in emotion and cognitive functions.